Here we go, back again with another video, right? I hadn't planned in doing a video tonight at all. I hadn't planned on doing a video, even though I hadn't planned on doing a video on this subject. I was thinking about it because I've had a few complaints from season card holders and other, you know, Sunderland fans who want to buy tickets and this, that, and the other about the state of the club, the, the, the way the club is run at this moment in time to do with the ticket office and buying and purchasing of tickets. And then I had to go and get my ticket, my, my season card sorted out. Well, first of all, new season card. I had a season card last year. I was led to believe when you bought your new one, I bought an early bird one. I, I paid, I don't know, I, before April the 14th, it got a bit cheaper. I paid two installments already, two more to go. I expected my season card in the post. A lot of people were saying, no, you don't, because it's the same seat in the same stand. You don't need to buy a new season card. I don't need to get a new season card in the post. You'll just use the same season card. So I thought, all right, fair enough. But then Wincy's came in the post. So I was thinking, he hasn't moved seat. Why has he got one? And I haven't got one. But then match day came, the Coventry game, and it didn't work. I was fortunate enough to know somebody about a spare card because they had somebody away, and I had used their card. But I've emailed the club four times. I've emailed the club four times in the last 10 days, thinking, well, I'll get a response. I should get a response before the next home match against QPR. I emailed Chris Waters. Unfortunately, he's away on holiday, but I did get a nice email back saying he's on holiday. Automated, aut automated one. Fair enough. You know, end of the day, we all go on holidays uh, at some point of the season. Some point, you know, yeah, every year. So, no harm done. I emailed the club four times, expecting at least a courtesy reply saying, there'll be one in the post for you, or pop along to the ticket office, we'll sort something out. Nothing at all. And I've waited long enough. I had to go today because... As I'm going to, I'm going to read out now exactly the times of the ticket office that's open this week, and we'll show you where the problem lies. Right, the ticket office. I think it was open Monday to Friday. Maybe wrong, but here we go. No, no, it's not. Sorry, I am wrong. Wednesday, the tenth of August, ten to one, three hours. Now I know fine well. I've been told today that people were turned away at one o'clock. Plenty of people in the queue. Season card holders banging on the window got turned away because at one o'clock it closes. Three hours, a measly three hours of a club this size. The shop, the, the ticket office is only open three hours. Bearing in mind, I was standing in the queue today an hour and the queue, you know, was about 30 deep. Thursday, 10 till 1, three hours again. Pathetic. Friday, which is today, 10 till 5. Now, if you like me, you work during the day, you kind of get until about four o'clock. I got there 10 to four. And then I was told, you know, after about 10 minutes that a lot of people wouldn't be able to get in because once five o'clock comes round, the doors are closed regardless because that's what the club wants. Nothing to do with the people at the door, nothing to do with the doorman, nothing to do with the staff inside. They were perfectly pleasant, perfectly nice, really good, you know, a credit to the club, to be honest. The doorman was nice and friendly. The, the staff inside were really pleasant and friendly, did a great job. It's the people above them who, who decided to, to only open the office these, these four days. You know, whether that's the, the manager or, of the, the manager of sales or whether it's KLD himself or someone directly under him, I don't know. But whoever's organised this, it's pathetic. Friday at 10 to 5 today. So a lot of people, when I left at 10 to 5 today, there was still a canny queue behind and half of them will not be getting in. I'd say three quarters of them will not be getting in and they'll have to go home. Now, Saturday it's open nine till three. Three o'clock, match starts or closes. Now, I'm, now a, a guy approached me, a guy approached me in the queue and said, you should do a video on this because I, I watch your channel and there's lots of serious problems at this moment in time. As I was standing in that queue, six people in front of me left that queue because they were waiting over an hour. Six people left that queue. One person was going to buy five tickets. It's a hundred pounds straight away, possibly. That's the that's buying juniors. And a couple of season card holders who couldn't get, basically, the season card, had enough, just walked away. And I was talking to people in that queue as well. One lad went to the match against Coventry. Three, he had three season cards, him and, he, him and his family, None of them worked. None of them worked. The guy behind me, he had, he, had, he had a season card. His didn't work. Another woman, two behind me. She went on the, the company match. Her season card didn't work. Luckily, the steward let her in. 
And all these people are in that queue today trying to get a new season card. Now that's that, that's just today. That's been happening all I mean that could, that could have been that could have been a queue from nine o'clock, ten o'clock this morning. Three hours on Wednesday, three hours on Thursday, and then last week as well. People are being turned away when they want to buy when they want to buy tickets. Now I don't know what's going on with the tickets online. Apparently it's very difficult to buy them online. But we'll go into the scenario of just my experience today standing in that queue for an hour and ten minutes, right? An hour, should we say. Like I said, I've seen six people walk away in the queue. There's at least 15 to 20 probably behind me that wouldn't have gotten served. And that's only today. How many during the day that I wasn't there for those other, God, I mean, other eight hours have done the same, walked away. Walked away from the club. I've heard stories of season card holders that saying they've had enough. They've had enough of the Mickey, Mickey Mouseness and they're just gone. So, first of all, you're not getting a new season card in the post. Or if you're, you're not due to one, it's not getting be, it's not getting re reignited to use again. So for me, this is pathetic. And on top of that, on the day of the Coventry match, someone at the club told me this. We use Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster to sell tickets and we also sell them at the club. There was a bit of a a bit of a a breakdown somewhere along the lines of Ticketmaster's sold season card holders' seats as well. So basically season card holders were going to the seats and they were sold, or season card holders were sitting there and someone was coming along saying, you're in my seat. And like, no, I'm a season card holder. That shouldn't be happening. We're the only Northeast club that has Ticketmaster. We use Ticketmaster. Newcastle don't use Ticketmaster. Middlesbrough don't use Ticketmaster. Hartlepool don't use Ticketmaster. Spennymoor don't use Ticketmaster. Them clubs don't have the problems at the doors of the tickets ticket office that we do they don't turn the people are not walking away from their clubs because of unorganization now is this a club does 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 KLD is he oblivious to what's going on does he not know the problems or does he not care now could be one of those two scenarios he either doesn't know what's going on or he just doesn't care and the amount of sales we are we are pushing away at the door of the ticket ticket office it's unbelievable. There's, there's probably going to be at least 20 people in the time I saw tickets that could have sold just walked away. Now, why don't we have a split shift? Why don't we have a team starting on a Friday, say at 3 o'clock, and then closing at 9 o'clock? Those extra four hours, imagine the amount of sales you could, tickets you could sell. The queue, there'd be a queue there all night at 9 o'clock. <coughs> I mean, I can't solve this. I'm just reporting back. And there'll be people out there saying, look at him, twist on about the club. Look at it, it's happening. Fans are walking away from this club because of this situation, the way they're being treated by this club. And we're not, I'm not talking about people like, you know, on the turnstiles or in the ticket office or, 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 or stewards, about the people up height who make these decisions. They do not care about the fans. They're making them stand in a queue for over an hour in the boiling hot sunshine. <coughs> I've seen a couple in the 60s. Guy had to put a, a t-shirt over his head because it was that hot. It's pathetic. Pathetic that we are probably, we're in the champion. I mean, you can kind of understand this if it was like COVID hidden lockdown in League One struggling, we're in the championship. We're the top 44 clubs in the country. We probably run the worst out of the whole of the country. I wouldn't be surprised if we are the worst run club selling tickets and, and sorting season cards out in the whole of the country. It is absolutely pathetic and it needs sort, it needs addressing. KLD, this needs addressing. You're forcing Sunderland fans to walk away from the club. You're forcing Sunderland fans not going to the match tomorrow. A guy walked away and said, I'm going to get the match tomorrow, I just walked away. I'm going to buy five, I'm going to buy five tickets. I think, some, I, think, I think he had friends from Canada coming over wanted to watch a match at Sunderland. They, they're not going to go now. They can't go now because they can't get a ticket. Let's go back tomorrow. I've had to travel eight miles today to sort out my season card, which, let, which, which to be fair, when I went in, it took two minutes to sort out. Two minutes I was in there. The, the lad who served us, really pleasant, you know, he's, I said to the club, and I said to the club, 
He just basically said, yeah, I've looked. It should have been posted out. It hasn't been posted out. He went out the back. He puts a new one in two minutes. Thank you. Good night. That's it. Easy peasy. Why wasn't that posted out? And that's not just me. I've seen five, six, six people in the last 15 minutes of me in that queue had the same problem as me. So how many more people have had the same problem as me? It's got to go to that, got to, it's got to drive and stand in a queue over an hour long in that sun, 30 degrees heat, to get a card that should have been posted because you pay for postage and pack. I'm sure you pay. You pay hard earned cash, £335 for me. Other people pay more. Not to get their season card. It's an absolutely, it's an absolute disgrace. I'm sorry it's a disgrace. And people have got a good right to get, you know, people, I don't agree with people getting irate with anybody at the club. I mean, for me, you shouldn't get irate at the guy on the door. You shouldn't get irate at people who work behind the counters because they're just doing their jobs. They're probably doing the jobs for maybe close to minimum wage. So imagine, you know, you've got five, pe five people in there today, three serving and two of them, like supervisors, one was, a, one was like a doorman, super, another one was a supervisor, I would have thought, and three people serving. Three serving, really. Only three. But say, let's pretend you got three on minimum wage, there's three kids serving on minimum wage, there's £10.50, whatever, it's 30 quid, maybe it's 20 for the security guard, I don't know, 20 for the supervisor, 20, 40, there's £70. Pound. There's over 10 tickets walked away. Yeah, that pays that straight away. And how many more sales are they going to make? We know we should be speculate, accumulate, speculate, because speculate, accumulate. The amount of money, the amount of money, you're not saving money, KLD. You're really not saving money. You're wasting it. You, you, you're pushing people away from this club who supported Sunderland for years. One guy has been a season card for 30 years, 30 years, and basically got turned away when it was five, like one o'clock, whatever it was, closed the doors, bang, that's it. I just, it's, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. I really just don't get it. It's never been this bad, surely, in the, in the past. Never. And Hartlepool, Dalton, I would have thought. Spennymo, yes. You know, Newcastle up the road, Middlesbrough. Don't have these problems. Just Sunderland. Treat Sunderland. Sunderland hierarchy. Sunderland hierarchy. Whether it's the managers of, of whatever, this, this, whoever deals with all this, or whether it's the owners... Do not care about the fans. That's just, you know, it, it, it really is a sad state of affairs. It really is a sad state of affairs. Why you're going to have to go and wait and queue an hour and a half for a card. You should have had the post ages ago. And then when you did get a card in the post, something didn't even work. So there we go. Right. I'm just going to say my piece. This needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Have that ticket office open. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, with a late night, a couple of late nights for people who cannot get there because they work Monday to Friday. And I don't want to travel down there 8 mile on match day to come all the way home to go all the way back down there again. The one lad, his season card wouldn't work. He had to go and wait and he had to go. He went to the ticket office on the day and he only got into the ground 3 minutes to spare before the commentary game. Only got into the ground 3 minutes to spare. And probably seat was taken as well. There we go. So there we go. Ah, it is. It, it, it's, it's not a laughing matter. It is a serious matter. And this side of the club is letting down. Letting down. The fans are fantastic. You know, the players are doing well. Alex Neal's doing a good job. You know, you got you got the stewards probably doing a good job. Everyone's doing a good job. The groundsman's doing a good job. The ball boys or, or ball people, because it's probably, probably ladies and girls doing it. And, and everybody, you know, the, the, the coaching staff, the staff being beneath. And you got some Muppet who's decided the fans are not important when it comes to having the season card or sorting out tickets. It is absolutely... Why are we using Ticketmaster? For fuck's sake, man. The club of this size should be just selling tickets through its own website, through its own ways of doing it at a ticket office. It's an absolute fucking disgrace. But on other news, on other news, and I'm only going to mention this because it's a match tomorrow and anybody out there who hasn't seen it or heard it, I've rambled on a lot. Right, Southern EFC is advising supporters of several changes to match the experience. The North Stand... Commencing from Saturday, fixtures versus QPR 
Away supporters will be subject to enhanced searches and checks upon entering the Stadium of Light. Additional training has also been undertaken with stewards located in the North Stand following the club's opening game of the season. And supporters located in the North Lower Stand are advised that an increased stewarding capacity in the North Stand upper will take place from the weekend. There we go. The safety of all fans at the Stadium of Light remains a priority, but getting fans into the ground's not. The further operational changes and, and also, right, we've got the rule to end. Throughout the 2021-22 season, a significant number of fans migrated into the rogue end from other areas of the stadium. And this regularly led to issues of overcrowding, overcrowding persistent standing and antisocial behaviour. This was highlighted by the Sports Ground Safety Authority. And on two occasions, the SGSA has now formally written to the club to state that this has to be classed as top priority and action must now be taken to address concerns outlined above. Supporters impacted by migrating of other fans have also contacted the club. They've contacted the club. Well, I contacted the club and so have loads of other people contacted the club about getting a bloody season card sorted out but you couldn't give us a fucking response. It was agreed that a long-term plan best approach to achieve lasting solutions. Right, okay. Ahead of the QPR fixture. This includes securing the walker end and its related turnstiles, concourses and walkways, which will now only be accessible to fans with a season card or a ticket to the walker end. Following the initial phase of activity outlined above, the second phase will include a collaborative progress, evaluate the best options in addressing, including safe standing. There we go. What do the new measures mean? The Roker end, including its turnstiles, concourses and walkway areas, will be a secure area and only be accessible to supporters processor, pro, possessing a season card and match ticket in the Roker end. How will, this, how will the measures be implemented? Stewards will be located at the main access points to carry out ticket checks and physical barriers will also be placed. What is classed as the Roka end? Following consultation with supporters' representatives, it is agreed that sections under 13 to under 40 and L32 to L36 are classed at the Roka end. Turnstiles 55 to 62. There we go. If you have friends or family in the Roker End and want to meet at half time, supporters located in the Roker End will be permitted to leave and return to the stand at their leisure, allowing to meet at half time. It also says you can contact if you're not happy with the ticket office. You fucking can it! Because they don't fucking reply. Right, I apologise to my friends. I've got to stop swearing. But it's pissed me off today. Right, anyway, take care. God bless me. God go with you. Please subscribe to the channel. KLD, get this sorted out. We don't want fans being chased away from this ground, from Sunderland, when all they want to do is go and watch the team they love.